Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, March 30th, and this is Holy Week. One of our traditions during Holy Week is to follow along with Jesus during the moments or the events of the last week of his life. We do this so that we can strengthen our connections to God, to understand the passion and the heart that God has and how important it is for God to repair God's relationship with us. Today's reading in our devotion comes from Mark chapter 15, and it's from the time when Jesus was standing before Pilate. The chief priests had a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Now at the festival, Pilate used uh, to used to release a prisoner from that from them, anyone from whom they asked. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. To ponder, Jesus the Good Shepherd lays down his life for his people. Some live this calling literally, shedding their blood as martyrs. Others live it in the unstinting uh, giving of their time, their energy, their selves, and those they serve. Joseph Bernadine from The Gift of Peace. Eye to eye. I'm not sure who looks more sad or weary as Jesus stands eye to eye with Pilate, the Roman governor. History tells us Pilate was a cruel and obstinate ruler. But here, carved in stone, we see something else. His eyes and mouth droop as if his duties have taken a terrible toil. Perhaps he is a world-weary he is world-weary from the wretched business of dispatching defiant and delusional souls to a bloody end, all to keep order and to an arrest of province. One almost feels sorry for him, trapped by responsibilities that kill the soul. And there you stand, Jesus, bound and exhausted from a sleepless night and the trial before the council, your eyes weary, resigned, knowing you will soon die for the mission you have lived. Sorrow weighs heavily on your heart as you, like Pilate, bear the burden of what you must do, with one big difference. You give yourself for the sake, for the love for, of this crazy world, while Pilate does it for power. Ironic, then, that you win our hearts with power beyond any Pilate could ever imagine, for there you are, weary eyes and all, loving this world to the very end. You know, this very much, much matches up with our theme from Palm Sunday where he talked about the kind of power and authority that Jesus demonstrates, which is very different than Pilate's. Jesus demonstrates power and authority via submission and self-sacrifice. Pilate demonstrates his authority by, well, deciding who gets to live and not. Pilate seems in the portrayal from the scriptures as being weary of his responsibilities, of having to make these tough decisions as a leader. Um, history tells us that Pilate was not a very nice person. Um, but even in this story, Pilate seems hesitant to want to kill Jesus. But in the end, he gives in and he does whatever he can. Because at the end, Pilate is concerned most about establishing, well, control. A kind of peace, but a control so that no one else will rebel against him. A forced peace, if you will, a forced submission of other people to himself. Where Jesus, the only person he forces to submit is himself to others. They're very different forms uh, of leadership. And Jesus is demonstrating more power in his willingness to submit than Pilate ever does in his forcefulness of forcing others to submit to him. That's the big difference between Jesus and Pilate. And it's the difference between how God wants us to live as opposed to the ways of this world. We have so many bad examples of leadership in our world today. So many bad examples of people abusing power. And this goes counterintuitive to what and how Jesus led to his passion. Jesus' very own heart about how he wanted uh, those who had been blessed by God to live. And this is one of the key reasons why we reread these events every year in Holy Week to see the stark comparisons between people like Pilate and Jesus, uh, because it helps us to reorient, uh, to redirect our faith, to, to understand that so many times we get led astray by believing and following the ways of this world, 
instead of the ways that Jesus laid out in front of us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to bear the weariness of loving so that we might follow where you lead. Amen. Amen. It is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Monday, Thursday. I will be delivering communion between 1130 and 1 under the south uh, overhang, the south door of our building, door C. Feel free to come, receive a blessing. Uh, be reminded about the commandment to love one another and to receive Holy Communion. Then in the evening at 7 o'clock, uh, there should be a video that will be posted live, which will be our uh, commemoration of Monday, Thursday. There will not be a service here at the church. Then on Good Friday at 7 o'clock, we have a live service from the church that will be broadcast on YouTube with a link on Facebook. You can either come in person or watch us uh, via uh, the internet. We will be commemorating the events of Good Friday, uh, the events that happened so many years ago. And then we do want to extend a warm invite to everyone to come join us this Sunday, Easter, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord at 8 and 10 o'clock. You can join us in the sanctuary or at home, whichever you are, are able to do. We are grateful for your being part of this community. Take care of yourselves uh, in the meantime and look in on those people who are most vulnerable. Amen.